I was born in uh, Rotorua. Dad worked on a farm in Nakuru. I always had pet lambs, uh, Cindy and Swinger. We moved around a bit. Uh, we went to uh, Whakatane, Pairoa, and then finally Gisborne. And that's where I did all my schooling in Gisborne. Went to St Mary's and Camping College in Lytton. And I lived there till about 18. And by that stage, mum and dad had separated and um, he'd moved away to back to Rotorua. And mum had met someone new and they moved to Greymouth. So I was on my own. Quite a few years ago, I was a single parent and I was on the DPB, you know, which is now the sole parent benefit, and worked at the local play centre. It was really tough, a tough time financially, you know, I had to um, use the food bank and things like that. Um, I remember going in to work in income when my first marriage ended and asking for some support and help, and the woman there at the time just pretty much just laughed at me and said, we're not a bank, you know. What do you expect from us? And I'll never ever forget that, that oh, I just felt so humiliated. It's made me who I am because I reflect on how that felt and how I was. And other things in my life, you know, having Down syndrome sister, things like that, makes me see things a bit more broadly. I don't judge to conclusions about someone because who the hell am I to judge? You know, I don't know what's going on for them in their life. And I just think it makes me a more empathetic, actually, and a stronger person. I've got three children of my own and two stepchildren. We're a blended family and they're all quite similar ages. When my husband and I met, the kids were sort of around about that 12 years old age. And actually they all got on like a house and fight. We're pretty lucky, I guess, you know, some, <laughs> some blended families have a bit of trouble. We got married in 2010. We took off to Australia, we eloped. He's always been that calm one and I've been that ugh, impulsive and patient and want things done yesterday. And we complement each other in that way and actually he's pulled me right, right back. Nowadays I'm a far more, I guess, relaxed, less impatient about things. And it just works and he's hugely supportive of what I do in my job. This is Teresa. My baby blister. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trees is a middle sister. There's me, you, and Melissa. Melissa. So Trees is the middle one, the troublemaker, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Trees likes to cut photos of me out of the paper, and I've, I've got, got a, a yeah. Like she's got a big that. box like of your stalker, eh? Yes. <laughs> So she's got a box of photos of me and um, in the free courier newspaper the, I do a column. Teresa worked out what day they were delivered and so she decided to walk around the neighbourhood and take the, Papa. the papers. So apologies to uh, Ash Burden for that. <laughs> but you don't do it anymore, eh? No. No. Stopped it now. Yeah. So we save the papers and give it to you so you can do the cutting out, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But my sister is famous. <laughs> she went to Wellington yeah. all the time for me. Yeah, go to Wellington for my meetings, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. So I became Teresa's guardian quite a few years ago now when Mum first became unwell and we shifted Teresa to Ashburden. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. and you shifted to Ashburden um, just so that I could be close. I especially want to acknowledge my mum, Margaret. I dedicate my maiden speech to you. You are the strongest, bravest, most determined person I know. No reira, tēnā koe takufaya. We made the decision to try and uh, trace our whakapapa when I found out that mum had been adopted and brought up with her biological mother as sisters. She ended up putting an ad in the Women's Weekly looking for, you know, children of Trevor Le Bar. And of course we all thought it was French, you know, French name. Um, and he ended up turning out to be a uh, young Māori man. The family came forward and we've, we've met them. I have two aunts and an uncle. It was really lovely when they met um, for that first time. And she's been to the cemetery where her dad is buried because I think he passed away quite young, around 28, 29. So it's been really cool, really cool to get to know them. My iwi is Tainui and my hapu is Ngāti Tahinga. And my great, great, great grandmother was called uh, Hira Rapihana. I was really 
really interested to know the history behind that side of my family. I wanted to know, you know where do I fit in? What does this mean for me? And you know, what's our story? When I got into Parliament, kind of naturally became part of moving into the Māori caucus and they've never, never questioned me, never made me feel any different in any way because I haven't been brought up to Māori. They just accept me for who I am and um, it's pretty, pretty neat.